We're taking you live to Ottawa, uh, where MP Parm Gill is speaking about the government's support for new legislation on organized crime. Let's listen. Criminal organization. Gangs today are targeting our youth, vulnerable citizens, including youth under the age of 12 and as young as eight years of age. These criminal organizations pose significant risk to citizens, communities, and families across this country. Those who are successfully recruited into the gang lifestyle are lost in the world of violence, drugs, and weapons. This is an environment that no Canadian should ever be persuaded, influenced, or forced to be part of. Gang members continue to expand in terms of numbers and power through constant recruitment initiatives. These individuals have blatant disregard for the safety and security and well-being of law-abiding Canadians. It is a behavior that cannot be tolerated, and we are taking actionable steps to address this issue. The measures contained in Bill C-394 will provide law enforcement officers and justice officials with additional tools to combat gang recruitment. There are far too many families and youth who live in fear of gangs. These groups should not have the power to take the freedom away from those who obey the law. By getting tough on gang recruitment, Bill C-394 will keep our streets safer, our children out of harm's way, and provide law enforcement officers with the tools that they need to take these criminals off our streets for good. Tonight, this bill will go to final vote in the House of Commons. I encourage all of my colleagues across all parties to help protect our youth and vote in favor of this legislation. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Detect gang recruitment. How can you be there when it happens? How do you know it? How does it work? Well, gang recruitment, uh, there's been far too many cases during my consultation process across the country, when I visited different stakeholders, school boards, law enforcement officials and stuff, even in cases where they're aware of individuals that are clearly targeting um, these youth to be part of this gang or criminal organization. But since there is no offense, standalone offense, in our criminal code, uh, there is nothing that they can do. Do you get to be aware? Uh, how, how does it, I mean, is it not secret by any way, or it, like very subtle? I'm, I'm just wondering, I don't know. All, all I would suggest is uh, that when you get out and, and talk to some of these individuals that are affected, families, stakeholders and stuff, there is no subtle way, there is no secret. In most cases, this is a very, very targeted approach that needs to be addressed. Nicholson, I have a question about Bill C-32. This was the bill introduced more than a year ago that was supposed to close a loophole uh, to allow same-sex couples who were married in Canada but didn't live here to, to get a divorce here. It's, uh, it's been more than a year. My understanding is the case uh, that, that inspired this is still on hold, and the lawyers involved were expecting a decision uh, by June before the, the House rises for the summer. Where is this bill at, and, and can we expect it? Well, it's in the hands, of course, of the, uh, the government house leader, but um, uh, we've indicated that uh, if we could get unanimous consent to move that bill forward, uh, we'd be very pleased to do so. Realistically, that's not how legislation gets passed. Why no. hasn't the government brought it forward? <laughs> I've been here you know, for a number of years, and uh, uh, when there's a meeting of the minds of the different political parties, um, that is exactly how very often it moves forward. And so, uh, again, uh, we've made that offer to the opposition. Yeah. Yeah. Number of bills uh, that you wanted to pass forward without the opposition yeah. giving their consent. Why don't you do this for this bill? Well, again, we've reached out to the opposition. We said, if you support this, let's get this thing through this afternoon, if we can. You know, you any regularly questions? Yeah. Adopt bills. With regard to gang recruitment, yes. I'm wondering if it might be more effective instead of doing, a, you know, creating a, another kind of offense. Um, how do you get at 
the attractiveness of gangs to young people because in many cases we're talking about a young man who doesn't have a, a dad who's going to guide him into a productive life. Well, again, the government of Canada has made a considerable investment in this area through the Public Safety's National Crime Prevention Strategy. We've invested in that. The guns, gangs, and drugs component of the Youth Justice Fund, uh, the drug treatment component, uh, intensive rehabilitation, custody, and supervision programs. And so the government has taken a complete approach on this, uh, but this bill that uh, is before Parliament today is a very important uh, component of that here. Nicholson, yep. is this bill going to cost any, or these measures going to cost any money? And in a, a related issue, I guess, what do you say to those who ask about the $3 billion in the anti-terrorism, um, you know, that the Auditor General pointed out yesterday, wondering where it went? Uh, again, in terms of uh, uh, all our initiatives in the respect to, uh, to, to the law, we always say there's a, a greater cost, of course, uh, when you don't tackle some of these problems, and uh, the, it's generally victims of crime who pay the, the price. But uh, I would point out the Auditor General said, uh, quote, we didn't find anything that gave us, concern, gave us cause for concern that money was used in any way it should not have been. That being said, I know there were some recommendations by the Auditor General, and the government has already indicated that they would comply with that. Thank you very much.